When I interview medical students for our pediatric residency program, nearly everyone talks about choosing this field because they're excited by the possibility of intervening in childhood and adolescence to prevent the risk factors for the most common causes of early death in adulthood, the usual suspects like smoking, obesity, and substance use. We pediatricians fervently believe that if we tell patients about the risks, we can prevent or change the behaviors. And for some patients, this works, but for a lot, it doesn't. And why is that? This is a question I ask myself a lot as I work with teenagers. What can I say to help keep them safe? It turns out to be less about what I'm not telling them and more about what I'm not asking them. The most important question that we can ask our patients to prevent all of the leading causes of adult health problems and all of the leading risk factors for disease is actually what happened to you. Not what's wrong with you, but what happened to you? What kind of childhood did you have? Did you have a parent with a mental illness or a substance use problem? Were you hit, kicked, or punched? Were you sexually abused? Did all of these things happen to you? Because it turns out the more that you are exposed to childhood adversity, the more likely you are to smoke, overeat, use intravenous drugs, and be depressed. In a dose-dependent way, you're also more likely to have heart disease, hypertension, and more skeletal fractures. Life expectancy, if you have six or more of these adverse childhood experiences, is 20 years less than if you have none. If you've heard about this before, you know that I'm talking about the ACE study or the Adverse Childhood Experiences Study. If you haven't, don't feel bad because it has been called the most important public health study you've never heard of. This study was a collaborative between Dr. Vincent Felitti of the CDC sorry, Kaiser Permanente, and Dr. Robert Anda of the CDC. The study was prompted by Dr. Felitti's desire to learn why many of his patients who were successfully losing weight in his weight loss program dropped out of the program and put the weight back on. What he found time and time again was that those patients had histories of sexual abuse or other cumulative traumas. And then this led to uh, interest on the part of the CDC to conduct a larger study looking at the connection between adversities or trauma in childhood and adult effects on health. Between 1995 and 1997, over 17,000 HMO members participated in this study. Each study participant completed a confidential survey which detailed questions about child maltreatment and family dysfunction, as well as current health status and behaviors. And what they found was that ACEs were common. 67% of the population had at least one ACE, and 12.6% had four or more. As I mentioned before, the more ACEs you have, the higher your risk of disease or engaging in health risk behaviors. A person who has an ACE score of six is 4,600% more likely to be an IV drug user than a person who has an ACE score of zero. If you have an ACE score of six, you're between 3,000 and 5,000% more likely to have a history of suicide attempts compared to people with an ACE of zero. A person with an ACE of seven or more has three times the risk of lung cancer and three times the risk of coronary artery disease, which is the number one killer of adults in the United States. The mechanisms for exactly how stress and trauma get under our skin are still being elucidated. But we know that this is about health habits that people develop to cope with stress and also about exposure to chronic high levels of stress hormones over time. There have been over 70 publications from the ACE study, and the CDC even has a website dedicated to information about ACEs. Yet for the most part, the way we train the doctors of the future has remained unfazed. Given all we know, this has to change. Dr. Andrew Garner, who chairs the American Academy of Pediatrics Committee on Early Brain and Child Development said, we see how early experiences are so important to lifelong outcomes how the early environment literally becomes embedded in the brain and changes its architecture. It's not just the right thing to do ethically. It's not just the right thing to do economically. It's the right thing to do biologically. And this puts it squarely in the realm of pediatrics. But it really puts it in the realm of the larger medical community because so many adult health problems have their roots in childhood adversity. As a medical community, we are doers and healers. So what should we do? First, we need to learn more. We need to understand the impact of adversity on health and think about how this will change our medical practice. 
the Regional Health Commission has launched a region-wide initiative to make our community more trauma-informed. This initiative is called Alive and Well STL. You can get involved, attend one of their trainings, or become an ambassador for their program. Second, we can change our clinical practice. We can regularly screen for adversity, and this doesn't just mean abuse, but also hunger, lack of basic needs, and safety. We can add adversity to our differentials, and we can understand that a rough childhood can create lasting changes in brain architecture. And third, we need to be honest with ourselves about the impact of ACEs in our own lives. Taking care of ourselves and acknowledging what may have happened to us is important too. We can do our best to minimize more ACEs from happening to ourselves, our children, and the children that live in our communities.